Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Cliffy Land Global Cooking Challenge. Tonight is night one of country number 167. Tonight we are cooking the food of Sweden. The first of three nights uh, cooking the food of Sweden. Tonight we'll be making Kal Inkopt Lux and Prasgura, which is a cold poached salmon with pressed cucumbers. Uh, in case you didn't already know, Sweden, that's it right there in Scandinavia. Alphabetically, this is our last Scandinavian country of uh, at least this phase one of the challenge as we work our way from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe in our uh, four-year journey in learning to cook. Uh, so, without more ado, there I So let me get our lens on there and we'll get to cooking. Happy Saturday night. This is going to be an unusual week in that we did want to make sure we get three nights of uh, Sweden because they have such a great and varied cuisine. Um, however, because of our schedule, uh, for the first time we're doing two cooking nights in a row. So um, this is going to be uh, curious. Hello Landing Point, how are you doing? Thank you for the restream and the follow. Uh, also, just so you can see my new toy that I got over Christmas, I've got me a globe. Woohoo! So we are in Sweden today, right there. So let's get crack a Uh We are going to start with the cucumber, and hopefully I not all wobbly or cockeyed with my funky stand here. So. Give me a second here, I don't want to blind you with the light. And make sure I've got my lens on correct. Uh, while people show up Ooh, on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Adjusting, hello. Okay, so. No, we are definitely wobbly. This is a very odd little stand I have have happen in here. So, in case you're wondering what's going on, it just doesn't want to stay. Uh, fun times. Okay, we're ready. So we're going to start with our pressed cucumber. So we are going to get our cucumber out here. English cucumber right there and we're going to cut it into thirds and I'm gonna need to peel that also normally you know this way you have to peel your cucumbers but I like to uh, and Marie hey thank you for the for the restream there how you doing so uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so like I said, we're doing three nights. It's gonna be tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday. Uh, or three nights of cooking Sweden. Uh, normally I would have done on Friday, uh, but I forgot I had concert tickets. So that didn't happen. So, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Anne-Marie. How have you been? Uh, one of the things I asked for was a new uh, special peeler. I, I have not gotten it yet. Um, so I'm gonna make do with this one. Um, I have done a variation on this before. Uh, before Meerkat was one time uh, when I cooked Japan. And you can find all the details at cliffyland.com. That's where the blog is. You can see everything going back from Afghanistan all the way up through Swaziland last week is already up there. Uh, videos for um, things uh, post Meerkat are linked in the blog. Um, for the most part, since we've been catching them, and uh, you can find out all the details. But Japan involved a variation on this. It was the first time I did the uh, concept of pressing the water out of the cucumber. However, this uses a interesting method. Uh, good, thanks. So you've been very busy, busy. Yes, I have. We were traveling uh, over New Year's. And uh, over Christmas, I, I wasn't going to be blogging. 
Um, so I did one off dish, off camera, which um, uh, when we get to some territories after we hit Zimbabwe, uh, I may do Macau because this um, curry uh, that I did from Macau was out of this world. So that. So we have our cucumber here, and uh, now I take pictures. That's for the vlog. So if you see me stopping taking pictures, that's why. Uh, but this particular uh, method of pressing the cucumber is a little different because uh, it calls for um, the old way called for it to, I'm doing thirds here. So I'm cutting this into thirds, one third, two third, three thirds. So one third. So cutting this into thirds. Uh, the way from Japan was basically slice it and then in a cheesecloth to squeeze it uh, really hard. Four years and now doing your cooking. Yes, I started in September of 2012 and now it is uh, January of 2016 and uh, Zimbabwe will hit in July. And then we're gonna take a vacation and then we'll do some territories and then we'll launch phase two, which I've got plans. So, uh, so, number, so now we're gonna slice this really, really thin. Uh, it says uh, that's done with a Swedish cheese slicer. Ain't got one of those. Or I don't feel like using one of those. Uh, but the, the, ja the Japanese one said to squeeze it uh, in your hands with some cheesecloth, and uh, that required a lot of elbow grease. This uh, is an interesting method, much more detailed with the, um, uh, with the method of uh, squeezing the water out of the cucumbers. So step one is the first third, and we're just doing this uh, uh, in three thirds. So we are, uh, we use an English cucumber because they have, uh, allegedly, uh, less seeds. So I thought this was going to cover more ground, but I guess they use a smaller plate in the picture. Uh, I gotta wash my hands. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, this is Swedish folk music, in case you're wondering. So, phase one. Oops, get that out of the way. Weird shadows. I'm um, being covered by a weird shadow. Weird shadow, weird shadow. And uh, we have our salt. And we are going to salt the cucumbers with about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Hey, Lou, Lydia, how are you doing? Good seeing you. Thank you for coming by. Uh, right now we're working on our pressed cucumber. Like I said, this is very similar to what we did for Japan. And then we, I did a variation on the, the pressed cucumber thing earlier um, uh, with my hands. Uh, but this, the method is curious. So we're salting one. And then now we've done that, we do the other third. Uh, I think the picture uh, either used a wider cucumber or a smaller plate. I'm thinking they used a smaller plate because it covered the entire plate. But that's okay. I'm hoping the, uh, the folk music does not anger the copyright gods at YouTube <clears throat> when I post this. I'm posting the stuff on YouTube now, if you haven't already. Um, it would be super cool if you went and liked my um, YouTube channel, because uh, I have one now. So now we're stacking this on top of the other layer of cucumbers. I'll try to get this on camera here. Do, do, do. And do, 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 do. there's a reason I'm putting these all sort of towards the middle. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, and now we're salting some more. The salt draws the water out of the cucumbers. And then lastly, the last third of the cucumber. I feel like I'm in line at, at, at Disney, but they don't have a Swedish pavilion. They have a Norwegian pavilion. 
And you know what? Um, this is the first time we're cooking Scandinavia on uh, on camera. Because the last Scandinavian country we did was no Norway. And no, that's before. That's before I started on Meerkat. The first country I did on Meerkat was Pakistan. I did one night on, on, on uh, what you call your uh, Periscope uh, before I uh, um, pledged my trove, trove to, um, to Meerkat. Uh, so that was Oman. On, uh, I had one person watching when I cooked Oman uh, on Periscope, which was a nice person, but it was an odd circumstance. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, so we never got to do um, any Scandinavian stuff on uh, Meerkat before, and now we are. Uh, Charmaine, hello, how are you doing? Thank you for the like and the restream. Uh, okay, lastly, we're going to add our salt to layer three. And I stack them all thusly for a particular reason. Which you're gonna see in a moment. So now I take a picture. That's what a stack of cucumbers salted looks like. Now we're taking a second plate and placing this large heavy plate on top of the first plate, thusly. And uh, I'm gonna put something on top of this. And I need something that's at least two pounds. And this is way over two pounds. I was thinking, what do I have this big and heavy? In the recipe, I saw them using a stack of plates. Instead, I'm using my cast iron skillet, which is big and heavy. <coughs> it's gonna sit right on top like that. I'm still waiting to see what you can do for Scotland. Think it will be tricky. I'm sure it will be. I'm guessing I'm gonna try to find a way to do haggis. I don't know, but I have got a couple months to wait for that one. But thank you, Chuck. Uh, so, this is what that looks like. So that is gonna press out the water for about an hour. It is 6.11, so by 7.11, uh, that should be ready. So let's move you over here, because that's just gonna sit for an hour while we get on to dish number two. Actually, before, we uh, get with dish number two, we want to get a couple things ready. So one is I'm going to need to find a jar or bottle that's going to hold um, not too much water. So uh, is this empty? That's empty. So we got us a jar. Yeah. Hey, Clifton, thank you for the restream. Um, so we've got ourselves a jar. I've got a jar. And where to our jar? We're going to add, I'm going to need a little bowl of water here. So hold on. I'll use you. Okay. So to our jar, we are going to add uh, three tablespoons of water. So one, two, three tablespoons of water. I can chuck this now. I can turn the, the volume down here. Okay, and now we're gonna add some white wine vinegar, which of course is buried in the back. Uh, Chuck, thank you for the like and the restream. To you too, Clifton. Um, uh, but, but one tablespoon of the white wine vinegar. So, let's see. Lid goes off. Right hand, left hand. One tablespoon. So basically, it's one part vinegar to three parts water. In you go. And to that, let me put this lid back on here. We are adding uh, some sugar. So get the sugar out. So sugar, let me clean this off. How, hey Diana, how are you doing? Thank you for the restream. Uh, good evening to you. 
Uh, again, for copyright reasons, I'd be playing ABBA and Ace of Base right now if I had my brothers, but I'm, I'm trying not to anger the copyright gods. So, we're adding uh, two tablespoons of sugar to this here. Is the right hand. Hey, Diana. Hello to you, too. I'm going to go off on a tangent here as soon as I finish, but uh, I need to focus on this for a second. So here's our sugar. It would be very meta seeing the reflection on the screen in the picture. My life never shows up on your... My likes never show up on your screen. That is really weird. I don't know why that is. I just assume it has to do with versions and devices and who knows what. Phases of the moon. Gremlins. Could be gremlins. Could be. That's from an old Bugs Bunny cartoon. Old World War II Bugs Bunny cartoon. I already took a picture of that, didn't I? So that's two tablespoons of sugar in there. And uh, let me put the sugar back. I can't believe I'm actually getting through that big thing of sugar. Because I have a whole other one sitting there. But I thought I didn't have any sugar. So, just taking up space. Uh, but I planned my whole week. Oh, you're still neither? That's weird, Emily. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for white pepper. White pepper, white pepper, which is uh, white pepper corns. So I'm gonna grind some white pepper into here. Okay, it says a pinch. One, two, three. That's, that looks like a pinch to me. Have you made a meal from a country or meerkat you didn't like or taste good? Um, yeah, uh, Ninja stole mine. <laughs> um, Yes, uh, there's a sort of legendary, um, the Sao Tome and Principe was the one night the most people ever watched. Uh, uh, I did four things. Three of them were really great. The fourth one was, um, sort of like a throwaway dish, and it was so bad I had to throw it away. Uh, and on camera, it was just like such a disaster. It was the only thing I made that ever went right from the stove to the garbage without stopping at the dinner table. Um, last week's Swaziland, um, meat was so-so. I mean, I liked it. It was okay. It was a little on the tough side. Um, the husband didn't finish his meat, and I wound up having his leftovers. And that was last week. Um, uh, but on Meerkat, things have been better. Especially because I've been having help from some nice, nice people. So I'm shaking this all up to dissolve the sugar. And we're gonna let this sit, because it's gonna go into the, uh, cucumbers later. But for now, this shall sit. Uh, no, but there have been some, I mean, the, the worst, like, of anything, uh, aside from the thing that went in the garbage, was um, not on Meerkat. It was from Benin, B-E-N-I-N. It was way early. I didn't know anything. Cooking with actual yams. Not sweet potatoes. Americans think sweet potatoes and yams are the same thing. In reality, they're two very different creatures. There's a whole reason about that. You can look that up on Vox, V-O-X dot com. They have a good video explaining that. But I used actual African yams, and it was a disaster so bad that the husband made a sandwich. But that was like the one time it was really, really bad. Snow is moving in at one to three inches, but one flake is too much for me. Oh, Diana. Uh, I love snow. I love snow. Um, I don't live in it now, and that's just as well. Um, if you're trying to get from here to there, it can be a total pain in the butt. Uh, get that. Okay, uh, now I just basically need to prep uh, some parsley uh, for that cucumber. And then we can move on to dish number two. Need to rinse off my parsley. Fresh, fresh parsley. It's Italian flat leaf parsley, not a big surprise. Uh, in case I didn't mention it before, or if you didn't, in case you didn't know, uh, parsley. It looks like that, right? So parsley has a pointy, pointy tips. So P, pointy parsley, C, curly cilantro. And don't, then curly, curly parsley is a different situation. But that one's obvious. Hold on while I rinse. 
Fencing time. Okay. Okay. Now I know you want to use dry parsley and in the best of all possible worlds my parsley would be drip dry and I would use the salad spinner and the world would be better that way. Uh but it's not. Who is the who is the main dish tonight? The main dish we're gonna get to in a second is a cold poached salmon. The na name is Kali Inkok Lax. I hope my pronunciation is not horrible. It is a cold, comma poached salmon. It's not cold poached. It's cold and it's poached, but it's not cold poached. Um, so we're getting together about two. Uh, is it two tablespoons? Am I right on this? Of the parsley. So I think this should do it there for now for now but again we are cooking three nights Hector thank you thank you for asking by the way uh, we're doing three nights we're doing tonight we're doing tomorrow a totally separate dish and then on Tuesday yet another dish so uh, it can be interesting leftover wise ah, you know I almost forgot to help preserve my parsley in their bag and fend off the dry mold, a clean paper towel to help absorb their moisture. Okay. Meanwhile, drying this off as best as we can, and we trim, trim, trim. And uh, I'm gonna need a place for that to land. So that is what is happening. How is everybody on a Saturday night? Uh, like I said, I, I thought I would be cooking on Friday, uh, but then I forgot, I had concert tickets. So we went down to Fort Lauderdale, saw the Silver Sun Pickups, uh, indie rock band, um, the husband's, one of the husband's favorites now. Um, I had only heard a couple songs, I liked them, but it was very strange being this age and being in a loud club, standing room only, watching a loud rock band play. I thought I was well past that age. Um, oddly enough, I was not the oldest person in the room. Or the only person my age in the room, anyway. Um, but it was fun. It was a little strange. So a bit of a throwback. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, and I wasn't sitting there going, Why is it so loud? At least I wasn't doing that, so... Hey, 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 Matthias, how you doing? Uh, I haven't seen Victor on Meerkat lately. I hope he is well. Maybe he'll stop over the next few days. I hope so, too. I, uh, um, you know, I mean, I love him. They're really great, and I owe so much to him. Uh, so I'm not talking smack, because I don't want it to sound that way. Um, it just, and I, uh, it's just funny that um, the, the only time I ever saw him show up on my feed um, was the very first time I was on on Meerkat and he like retweeted and suddenly had a million people. So I'm eternally grateful for that. If it wasn't for him I would have ever had a single viewer I think. So very nice guy. But yes I haven't seen him at all which is a shame because there's only so many people that I ever see on that I feel like seeing, like watching. So um, it's a shame that I don't see him that often. Oh fun concert. Yes it was. Uh, good, good to hear that you are doing well, Matthias. Uh, yes, Charmaine, it was a fun concert, and I have not been to a concert in a while. And I haven't been to, like, a loud young people concert, um, in a, in a couple years. Not uh, since, more than, not since I moved to, from Ohio, O-H-I-O, -O, Ohio. Um, I mean, I'm seeing more, you know, people my age concerts, you know, since, but that's a different situation. I'm watching a, looking at the, the gray hair ponytails and tie dye and such and going, oh, okay, well, it's the demographic as opposed to, hmm, young people. I bet they wonder that they're surprised that I even know this act, that kind of situation. 
Uh, but it was fun. This is way more than two tablespoons. I'm realizing this now. Carrie Osborne, how are you doing? Thank you for liking the restream. Beautiful kitchen. Glenda, thank you. I wish I could take credit for it. Um, as I mentioned, this, um, well, it kind of goes back to the origin story that I never learned to cook for 30 years, you know, owing to a accidental food poisoning because I didn't know food basics because I never learned to cook and almost died. I didn't cook for 30 years, was fearful of even setting foot in the kitchen. Uh, so, you know, for 20 plus years, the husband did like every last bit of food preparation. Um, but I finally decided to cook. But when we moved here, I saw the place and I said, what a lovely kitchen. That'll be great for resale value. I'm not going to be setting foot in there, but it's nice. And then, what do you know, I started cooking and I got people watching. Is anybody watching NFL? Not in this house. Uh, I, 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 I don't even know what the heck is going on, which is perfectly okay with me. Um, -doo -doo. Uh, okay, so we've got our parsley. We're saving that for later. Okay, and boy, did I waste a lot of parsley. But, you know, it's okay. Um, we'll live. Uh, so, let us get this, clear this out, and then we'll move on to our salmon. I am not the powers of observation in determining how many tablespoons of parsley I need. Note, note to self. Note to self, you are overstating how much parsley you need. Okay, so moving on to our salmon. So, our cold poached salmon. Uh, I just bought salmon uh, just now at the, what I call the Global Food Boutique. Uh, it's uh, about 40 minutes away. It's not, not really close. Although I, although I can jog there. Ah! I might jog that way tomorrow. Uh, but no, it's 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 this hoity-toity, fancy-schmancy place that has a big sign outside saying Yacht Provisions. So, uh, they have all sorts of, uh, when I'm looking for European goods, and I know it's going to be expensive, um, that's where I go. Um, because they had, uh, what I'm going to use on Tuesday, and you can probably guess what I'm making on Tuesday, Lingonberry Jam. They had that. It's probably the only place nearby in driving distance that I'd be able to find that. Uh, and they also have a great fish market. So not knowing stuff, and I always say, hey, listen folks, I don't know anything. I said, uh, okay, here's the deal. Salmon. Uh, I don't know which one I should get. Um, they had a Norwegian smoked salmon, which was very expensive. And I said, should I get that? I'm cooking Swedish. And they said, no, that's really for lox. Um, uh, and I told them what I want to do and they said, no, you want the Scottish, uh, salmon. So this is the Scottish salmon. So that's what I done got. So that's about half a pound. I'm not cooking the whole, uh, you know, piece. Uh, there's a way to do this for using the whole huge piece of salmon. And there's a method for doing it, uh, we call that jam in Austria Granglen. Interesting. So here's our salmon. Uh, I'm going to cut it in two portions. I'm using the recipe uh, for doing things in portions. This is half a pound of salmon. So I guess I'm cutting it right down the middle there. And I'm just going to let it sit here. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, baby. God, I feel like I didn't get enough salmon now. I could eat that whole thing myself. I should have gotten more. In any case, there's our salmon. Skin on. The skin helps it hold together. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it in the fridge. And uh, now uh, we are going to do a little bit of prep. Just a couple things. 
And uh, since I put a protein down, I need to wash this again. I'll be right with you. Scottish, yes, I know. I mentioned Scotland, didn't I? Hootman, Hootman. Hold on. If it's not Scottish, it's crap. Uh, Jock says, the Scottish salmon is the best ever. I catch salmon in the river, North Scotland. My biggest salmon was 19 pounds. What's a big ass salmon? That is a big salmon. Okay, so one, two bowls here. I got my trash, gotta clear that out here. Okay, yep. Uh, this was uh, Scottish farmed salmon uh, that I don't know. Uh, when it comes to salmon, the farmed versus wild thing, I am completely, uh, I, I, I keep hearing opposite things, and I never know what to make of it, so. We have a uh, regular onion. How many years do you cook? Oh, oh you mean how many years have I, have I cooked? Uh, well, only the four. Only since I started in September of 2012. Before that, I could not boil water. And I kind of mean that, literally, in that uh, I, I couldn't even boil water. I would set, I mean, I, I was legendary. I would set a ball of, um, I figure, oh, I'm gonna, you know, make some spaghetti, like the only thing I could try. And I would set a pot of water to boil, and then I'd sit down and watch a soap opera and say, why is this smelling? And the pot of water would be on fire. I said, I just put water in a pot, how can it be on fire? Uh, because I was very bad. No one taught me basics. No one taught me the simplest things, like things can catch on fire. The, you know, without, I don't want to tell the, have to tell the food poisoning story too many times, uh, but I did like the stupidest things you could possibly imagine. Um, and I went in the hospital for 30 years. I, I went in the hospital for a week. I did not cook for 30 years. Being in the hospital for 30 years would be a very, very, very bad situation. Uh, I prefer wild caught to farm salmon whenever possible. Yeah, I, 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 I totally get that. Um, in terms of certain types of fish and certain circumstances, um, I gather that it's a complicated situation. Did you go to a course or did you learn it yourself? It's been totally here, learning on the job. Uh, if you go back to the blog and you start with like, you know, Afghanistan, you'll see how the most basic things in the world that totally freaked me out. I did not understand, you know, like what I'm doing, how to chop an onion. It took me like two years to figure out a basic thing of how to chop an onion. Uh, I did take one day, one course, one time early on because I wanted to learn a certain basic knife skills. And there is a, I'm slicing this onion now, by the way. Um, the, and, and this is one of them, the whole claw technique to not to be able to cut something thin and not slice your hands open um the uh, but i did go to a one day course at this uh, culinary school uh in west palm beach about half an hour away uh they offered like this weekend course for you know people and usually it's like couples and stuff and hey jeff needles how you doing my good man thank you for the like i very much appreciate it um the uh but i did go for this one day course and uh, I mean, I did learn a couple basic things, which is good. Uh, though seriously, it was a giant waste of money uh, because they spent half the time telling us things that had nothing to do with anything uh, that we were there for. Like, you know, how to make a bread pudding, we spent the morning and the guy spent, you know, like an hour going on about his vanilla plants. And I was thinking, I'm here for knife skills, I have one day, you only offer this course two times a year and I already waited six months for it. Um, so that was my one and only course. I wish I could take more or something, uh, but it's been totally on the job. I've been getting a lot of help from you nice people, doing a lot of research, but it's all self-taught self at this point. And now the idea that I can like make a dish that sometimes I go, wow, that's better than I had at a restaurant. Like the thing I made during the off week, that was really good. OMG, you are an awesome guy. Thank you so much, Matthias. You are very nice. Thank you for the restream. Um, 
That is very nice of you. Uh, so, yeah, it's really cool. Like I said, during the off week, uh, this is my red onion. I'm thinly slicing this too. Um, by the way, there's a website called The Tasting Table, which I am just such a huge fan of. It was uh, a friend of mine sent it to me before I cared. And I said, fine, whatever, I'll follow it on Facebook, I don't care. And every day, there's at least one thing, I'm like, oh, I wanna cook that, or oh, that's a really great tip. You know, so they'll give you a tip like how, you know, the best way to press your garlic, or the quickest way to peel an onion. And every day there's something really good, so I follow them on Facebook. Uh, they are just outrageously good. And they had this recipe that they posted, um, for this uh, chicken curry that I made during the off week. And it was super great. It was super great. And I loved it and I made it and I took a picture of it. I might be able to show you. In fact, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm gonna try this. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. We're gonna find out. Okay, I've washed my hands. Okay. Let's see if I can show you. Because it's back away. Hold on. Scanning, scanning. No, too far back. Um, the, uh, I made this from Macau, which I may do when I, like I said, when I do territories after Zimbabwe and we take a vacation. Um, but it was out of this world good. It was so good that I said, wow, this looks like it came from a restaurant and was a restaurant recipe. And it was spectacular. It was so good. Wow. And it looked fancy and it tasted just incredible. So, uh, there's so many people that I want to make food for, but, uh, you know, people in my life tend to like say, yeah, that's weird. I don't like spicy food. I don't eat this. I don't eat that. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm gluten intolerant. I, I, I don't eat pork. I don't like hot food. You know, I don't like ceviche. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. I got people online. You'll come. Did you get my tweet with Austrian food and did you save it? Uh, yes, I did. I did, I did, I did. So I, I favorited it. So um, that. So um, like I said, it may be, you know, quite a long time before we get to it. So you're going to have to be real patient. Uh, but I did get it. Um, I'm going to have to uh, uh, also compare to see if... Because next week is Switzerland, which is your neighbor. So, um, trying to find... I'll, I, I will be trying to find, you know, particularly Swiss food. Um, that uh, is not something I've already covered for uh, France or Italy or Germany or Liechtenstein or Luxembourg or Austria or any other country in the general region. Germany. Uh, so uh, that's going to present a challenge. It's always a challenge uh, every week. Sometimes there's too many things to pick from. Sometimes there's too, many, too few things to pick from. Uh, sometimes, like Sweden is one of those almost too many. Um, sometimes there's a challenge of, oh, I already did things just like it for a neighboring country. Um, which could have been a problem for Sweden. Because like, I already did Grevlox for Norway. Um, so I didn't have to do grevlox this time. Uh, remember how you noticed how I don't tend to tear up when I slice onions? I think red onions might be the exception here. Uh, because a little bit, a little bit, I think it's a type of onion, I think, that, that is part of the issue. Do -do 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 -do. We desperately want to go to Sweden, because we want to see the Alba Museum, among other things. Yay, I will watch. Yes. Ah, there go my eyes. Oopsie doodle. Okay. Ah. We'll be, okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. We'll be, wow. Okay. Ah. Doing fine. Doing fine. Onions. Here, make your eyes water. Yeah. Okay. Washing. Yes, red onions definitely affect me differently than, than your uh, uh, regular yellow onions. Okay, so we have our red onion, we have our yellow onion. You, did you cook German food? Yes, yes, all alphabetical. So back under G, uh, which was December of 
2013. I cooked Germany. Came out quite well. I got a. I found a German community um, about an hour away from here, and uh, where lots of German people lined up for their authentic German sausage. And I got real authentic German sausage that I brewed uh, in beer, uh, cooked in, uh, and then I did the German uh, red cabbage something, and at least one other thing. It was very good. It was very, very good. Um, so check that out. Check out, you know, all the neighboring things. You'll see that uh, the, the, the Liechtenstein and Luxembourg also went very, very well. Um, and Austria went very nicely, too, with the um, Wiener Schnitzel. And the uh, Spetzel, Spetzel, that's what I made, Spetzel. That was the first time I ever tried that. It was kind of funny in making it, but it worked out quite well. Okay, so we've got our onion, now we need to get a lemon. One yellow lemon. Lemon. Lemon! It's saying unwaxed lemon. To be honest with you, I don't know what that means, except for it doesn't have wax, and I never knew one that did, that did have wax. So we've got our... Uh, lemon, it's, this one's a little worse for wear, but, uh, this sounds like Mexican music. Uh, I'm gonna, for, I'm gonna put this in here for 10 seconds, because I, when you put a lemon in the microwave for like 10 seconds, it's juicier. Which actually is true. I didn't think it was true, but it's true. And it doesn't heat it up too much. Uh, thinking of attempting uh, mole, mole, should I use your recipe and uh, is it on YouTube? Uh, it's not on YouTube, um, but it is incredible. Give yourself a whole day, buy lots of tissues because you will cry because it is very, very, very challenging. But when it's done, you will be so glad you did it. Um, make sure you have a good strainer and a very strong ladle to push to strain it through. Uh, fine mesh or, you know, big holes for the mesh matter because uh, if it's a fine mesh like I have, it's going to sit there all day and nothing's going to happen. So, um, you know, practice. Uh, I don't know, just try and practice. But buy all the stuff. The recipe that's linked on my site is probably the easiest one you'll find. Um, there's another one I'm dying to try, uh, however, um, it requires very, very, very specific chili peppers, which are next to impossible to find. Uh, so the one that you can easily find all the dried chili peppers, if there's like a Latin market in your area, uh, is the one that is on my site. Uh, it's linked from my site. It's not my recipe. It's linked on my, on, on, on my blog. And you can see all the steps I went through. I made it. It was out of this world, uh, and it was so good, and even though I cried and it was a lot and a lot of work, uh, it was so worth it that I did it again for company. And I would do it yet again. That's how good it was. Um, it involved, uh, you have to open all the windows because you will be purposely burning stuff. Yeah. On purpose. I know I am sort of sawing through this, but I don't want to be slicing my hand open. So we're thinly slicing this lemon, thusly. So we have our thinly sliced lemon here, da da. And I really don't matter about the seeds. Uh, you'll see why. So lemon. Uh, okay, next on the slicing and dicing prep menu are two or three? Two, two carrots. Carrot number one. Yeah, but uh, carrot number two. Okay, go that way. So we're gonna wash and then peel the carrots. I'm gonna wash. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Oh, thank you for doing that. That's here. Get some more. Okay, so we've got our carrots, and now we're going to peel the carrots. I need to get that vegetable peeler. It was on 
this list of things I wanted to get. And when I was in Columbus at the uh, at the uh, food uh, at the food market, uh, which was so good, and I'm kind of mad that I don't live walking distance from it anymore because I wasn't cooking back then when I lived there. But they have a, a store that has um, all the kitchen gadgets in the world you'd ever want. And I thought of getting the vegetable peeler I wanted there, but it looks it's like, yeah, I can get that anywhere. Naturally, everywhere I've been, they haven't had it. So I'm dealing with this one, which is okay, but not as good as the one I was looking at. Okay, we'll be done with you in a second here. Sanaoria. And what's up, Doc? Okay. Do, do, do. That's your Spanish Spanish language word of the day. Sanaoria. Uh, boo -boo -boo -boo, your husband standing uh, saying, come on, I am hungry. Ha ha ha, yes. Smoke alarm is sensitive here, so mole recipe will probably set it off. Yes, you'll want to turn it off. You'll want to turn off your smoke alarm for making the mole. Uh, because you'll have to literally burn stuff and it will be smoking and you will have to open every window in the house. That's kind of how it works. Um, so we're slicing the two carrots. I need a bowl for the carrots. Okay. How are we doing on time? Okay. And you would think I, you would think I don't have a watch on my wrist. This is, this is like the most sort of generic collection of Swedish folk music you'd imagine. But again, copyright gods. Which is kind of funny since, uh, what is it, uh, Pirate, Pirate Bay has a Swedish uh, URL. The, uh, the world's leading BitTorrent site. The, uh, the site that the copyright gods most want to take down. Happens to be in Sweden, or Swedish maintained, or in a Swedish domain in any case. So, strange ironies. Meanwhile, carrots. Slicing the carrots, and then we'll have uh, how much? One, one, one more thing before we get moving. You know, they probably don't have to be particularly thinly sliced, but screw it. No, not there. Okay. Sandwich hand, milk hand. Okay, we've got our carrots. Uh, strange, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, making sure... Okay, so now I'm gonna... Does, how many? I think it's six. I need to wash my hands. Hold on one second here. I need to uh, be sure I'm exact about something here uh, because of, we are using uh, dill. Uh, by the way, one thing I've noticed, I mean, I, I, I know if you are used to cooking European food all the time, this is zero surprise to anybody. To me, uh, it was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, because um, I hadn't cooked at all, as I just said, and the uh, every time I come up to a, uh, food from a country, what uh, you just said about irony, yes, yes, very odd. Um, uh, though I don't think the Swedish people who want copyright protection feel the same way. Um, three to six. Uh, dill, dill. Everything in Europe is dill. The cl the further up you are, the more dill is involved. And depending on the alphabet and how many European countries I have to deal with, I either have not enough dill or lots of leftover dill because I haven't done a European country in weeks. It's either feast or famine around here. So uh, for this, we uh, I need to uh, separate things two separate ways. Uh, here, let's do because I need the stalks and I need the leaves. So one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. So we've got six sprigs of dill. I'm sure we'll be using plenty of dill uh, the rest of the week and next week too, I'm sure. Something about Europeans and their dill. When I first started this, I, dill was actually activating my gag reflex. Thankfully, I got over that. Okay. Yeah, when I cooked Armenia, I made these um, rolls. And uh, yeah, I was literally gagging. Okay, so we're taking the leaves off the dill and putting them one way. And we're gonna use those later, but in this case, we're just gonna use the stems. So this time, the stems will not go down the garbage disposal. Yet. So one. I really feel I'm at Epcot right now. Uh -huh. I feel this could be like a roving band of street performers coming by, doing a performance right now. Right before the illuminations. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. You know, if you live in another country and speak another language, when there's fireworks, is that, do, even there, do people go ooh and ah at every explosion of fireworks? I want to know. Or is that just an American thing? Okay, so we've got our leaves, and we have our stems, and we're gonna be using the stems. So we have our stems right here. Uh, and... Okay, we're ready to start cooking, yay! So, we move to the other side of the room. And we detach, and we move, and we're walking, and we're walking, and we're there. Okay, so now I need a large saucepan. Which one do I want? Blah. I'm gonna use this one. You know what, I think, not that it matters. Uh, I need a second saucepan uh, because I'm gonna be cooking a second thing. I'm using this other one, older one, because uh, my, my newer ones, uh, I think I bent them. This is not bent, as you can see. Yes, I'm Canadian, I love fireworks, yes, but do they go ooh and ah with every explosion, even in, like, other languages? I mean, not that ooh and ah are in a given language, but, you know, I just wondered if that's tra tradition. Um, okay, so here we're adding six cups of water. So... So two... So, uh, Anne-Marie, you're what, in, in uh, if I recall, you're in Toronto, somewhere near the lake, to, or somewhere near Lake, what is it, Ontario? That's probably why it's called Lake Ontario. Yep, okie dokie. Okay, so we've got our six cups of water. I'm already turning that on high now. Um, mm, 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 mm. okay, so picture time. Uh, by the way, I have water in here, uh, and I'm gonna need to fill that up for the next thing. But that comes later. Right now, Alberta. Oh my goodness. What's that joke from, uh... I have a girlfriend, a girlfriend who lives in Canada. I forgot, her name is whatever, and she lives in Alberta. No, her name is Alberta, and she lives in... 
<laughs> Anywho, water. This is what water looks like in a pot. Ooh, exciting. Okay, to this we are adding our onion slices. So we have our yellow onion slices. And our red onion slices. And our sliced carrots. I should tilt you so you can see more. And uh, our lemon slices. In you go. And our stalks of dill that otherwise look like they would be in the trash heap. And to that, we are adding three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. And I did not pre-set that out because I knew it would take time. Alberta beef, we were known for that until the bad count, mad count incident. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, what's it with um, uh, Katie Lang? That dang Lang. Uh, Okay, how many? Three? One, two, three? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One. For you. Two. And three. You know, funny thing, uh, I have a, a friend, um, I don't think she's, what, uh, I think that's going to be tasty, yes. Um, I don't think she's on right now, uh, but uh, my dearest uh, and most, fa most faithful follower, uh, uh, um, uh, um, lived in Saskatchewan. She's Indonesian, but she lives in Sa lived in Saskatchewan. But now she lives in uh, in Vancouver. Um, Charmaine, my friend used to live in London, Ontario. She'd always take green chili back with her. LOL. Yeah, there's um, a lot of cross border finding stuff thing from uh, a uh, previous life experience that came up. I have an issue. Uh, I need six white peppercorns and they're in here. So I think I'm going to have to do that thing that I did the other day with the green peppercorns, which is fish white ones out of this. Dang Lang Nickelback. Oh well, yeah, well, we try not to think about Nickelback. Um, okay, six. Katie Lang was a Nickelback, not so much. But that's just me. Two. There was a whole article back in the day, before she was out, um, in, I think it was Rolling Stone, that it was called That Dang Lang. Because uh, when she, uh, someone was in a, a cab in Alberta and mentioned, oh yeah, Katie Lang. And then the person in the cab, the cab driver said, that dang l Lang. And you kind of knew what he was trying to not say. Oh no, peppers everywhere. I lost one, I know I did. Okay. They only sell these things mixed in the grinders, which is kind of a pain. But we're gonna add our six white peppercorns right now. And the North Market in Columbus, you could get individual uh, packages of different colored peppercorns, like you could get, you know, a whole container of pink peppercorns. Oh man, well, that, I'd probably go through that in like a couple years. So what color do you need tonight? White, but the, they're only in the grinder. Right. Uh, so we have our two bay leaves, lol, two bay leaves going in, and... Uh, a half teaspoon of fennel seeds. Fennel, fennel, fennel. And that's a uh, half teaspoon. This one is optional, but since I got it, hey, why not? Joy is knowing you already have something in your cupboard. Okay, half teaspoon of fennel seeds. I need to get moving because that water is 
when I want water to boil, it doesn't fast enough, and when I do, it goes too fast. Murphy's Law. Uh, one star anise, or anise, I don't know which the pronunciation is. Do I have it under S? Do I have it under S? Do I have it under A? Uh, do I have it under S? Do I have it under A? A, L, Oh dear. I know you're here. Oh no, it's in a jar. Okay. And, and, and star and S. Okay, here. Uh, one. One lonely little star and S. See, it looks like a star. Ooh, just like that. In you go. And then we're gonna bring it to a boil for five minutes. So I should probably mix that up. Dirt mm -mm. spoon. So boiling for five minutes. What is your secret camera setup? Do you have a tripod? It is this uh, little, um, I'm, I'm moving you back because um, the heat does not play well with the camera. Uh, it's a, uh, it's like a snake. It's like, imagine a, a, a black piece of metal that's just, you bend it and shape it. And so it's kind of curled up and it's doing this business. So, uh, if you wobble, that's why, because it's, you know, rocking back and forth. And this is, cameras are rocking, don't come a knocking. So, uh, five minutes of a boiling on you. And then after it boils for five minutes, uh, whoopsie doo, uh, we're going to uh, bring the salmon, put the salmon in and let it boil uh, for a minute or two. I think it's boiling a little too much. Oh, by the way, a little secret. If you put a wooden spoon across the top, your bubbling over won't bubble over as much. Uh, so how we doing? How we doing? How we doing? Okay, so I need to find a lid for that, and there's a reason. Because uh, while I'm not using the lid now, I will be later. And not for, well, it's a reason that would seem to make sense. Because I would figure that would be to keep things hot. Uh, but this is sort of the opposite. I guess it's to keep the temperature from cooling down too much too soon I don't know this is uh, these recipes um, tonight come from Swedish food I think it's swedishfood.com um, very nice simple they you know give you the the, the play-by-play -play. Um, there's a number of different places I went checked a number of different recipes they seemed like a good solid easy to follow kind of way slash place which is good um, meanwhile, I'm gonna get the, uh, the tea kettle over here that I filled with water. I'm gonna get that boiling. Because I want, uh, boiling water for the next thing over there. Or at least water that's hot enough already. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna have a drink of water while I wait. And throw out some of this trash that I've accumulated. But we will be um, washing potatoes. This is going to be served with new potatoes. Now, new potatoes just didn't strike me as a particular type of potato. I I'm, I'm, could be wrong, but I thought they were just basically like newer, like not quite as big potatoes. Um, and for that, I found a wide variety of options. The option I chose were these. It says, Enchanted Rose Potatoes, which I'd never heard of before. Inspired, guaranteed quality. Um, they're like that. They're little, little rosy potatoes. Uh, but uh, the premise is they are uh, speedy cook time. Uh, the point is I don't know how speedy. I don't want them to be too speedy, because I have stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So two more minutes on this. Let me get my salmon out. As we met, we've met Mr. Salmon before. Hello, hello, don't eat me. Sorry. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Now, I don't know how long it's gonna take to cool. I know how long it's gonna take to cook, but I don't know how long it's gonna take to cool. So I'm thinking it's gonna take longer than I want. Uh, but, you know, say la vie. This is one of those things that supposedly you can um, keep in the fridge and uh, such. Uh, I started that at 6, at 6.15. Um, our friend, the uh, cucumber, still sitting here. So uh, I need to, at uh, like 7.15, that will be ready for the next phase of things. But right now, it's this. So I think I've kind of timed things okay. So I've got one thing at a time. So the salmon is going to cook in the boiling water uh, for uh, just about a minute or two. And then uh, we're going to move, we'll do a switcheroo here. And then let this cool off. Okay, now it is time to bring in Mr. Fish. So, <laughs> right hand, left hand. I really wish I was ambidextrous, I really, really do. Okay, fishy, fishy, fishy. And water, water, water. Okay, in you go. Number one. Und. Number two. Und, he did burp, burp. Okay. And go. Hey Siri, open. Stopwatch. Let's see if it works. Has been playing nice lately. Yeah. It's taking too long. No, Siri, you're taking too long. So sorry about that, Siri. Let's try a stopwatch. Is that the timer or the stopwatch? That's this, the timer. It is the stopwatch. Go. Can you go for me? Go. Yay. Okay. We'll bring it back to a boil. Boiling now. Uh, I'm gonna give it another minute. Because all my yakking took some time. So, boiling, boiling, boiling. That's the back one's on high, the front one's on, like, medium high. How are we doing over here? 30, 34 seconds. It really looks like a watch, like a stopwatch. Curious. Bubble, 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 bubble. So once the time is up, it's gonna be about now. That's enough time. Stop. I said. I, I, I said. I said stop. Uh, we're going to take you off the heat and cover it, or not? Maybe not in that order. And we're gonna let it cool down. this over here. In fact, I can move that over there. Yay. Just downloaded Tumblr. Oh, wow, that's cool. It's fun. Um it's uh to be if I'm be if I'm being honest, it's not really built for what I use my my blog for. It's really not meant for long form blogging like I do. Um it's really more meant like uh, Instagram with like a picture or just a text or a gif. Um but I use it for blogging and screw it. It works that way. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. So our water's boiling over there. Uh, I have another few minutes over here. So we've got our tea kettle. Uh, we need to clean our potatoes. So we've got our potatoes, and I just need enough for two people uh, for this one night. Let me clean this off. because, um, but Tumblr is fun. It is fun, and you can follow stuff. Um, when I look for pictures of, or anything from a given country, it's kind of crazy. You look for a, ha uh, you know, because you're basically you're looking for a hashtag. Um, so it's like looking up, when you look for, just for the word of a country, depending on the country you're looking for, you will find very, 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 very different things. You know, like I'm looking for Congo, and you see pictures of sadness and destruction and hungry people and warfare, you look for, you know, uh, Dominica, a country, 
in the in Caribbean, you get lots of pictures of very sexy ladies. You know, um, it's just weird. You look for Croatia, you see pictures of beaches. So you look for Liechtenstein, you get lots of pictures of anime, which is a whole other discussion. Okay, so we've got our water is a boiling over there. I need to figure out how much of these uh, I need to wash. My water's already boiling. Holler in a second. So potatoes, potatoes. We're gonna do these skin on because these are good for that. That seems like enough for two people. Oh, by the way, uh, Jonathan, thank you for the like. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So I think that's enough for two people. I'm pretty sure these are gonna cook super fast. I'm gonna wash these off. You want to watch, you can see the excitement happening in the sink. Oh, the rapture. In fact, no, not that hot. It's got little potatoes, got googly eyes and everything. Jonathan, hey, 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 thumbs up to you. Oh, um, speaking of emoji, has anybody noticed the uh, recent uptick? That's the, the tea kettle, obviously. In the use of the uh, key, like key emoji, apparently it's uh, gone up like 800% in the past few days, and it's just because of DJ Khalid, rapper slash entrepreneur, DJ Khalid. He started using the key, and it's suddenly like people are using it right and left. The key is in. Everyone use the key emoji. It is key. If your kids start using the key emoji, now you'll know why. Uh, okay, boiling water in the pot. That was a bad idea. I mean, the pot was already hot. It's already boiling now. We're the bloods. No, 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 shut up. Okay, so now we are putting our new potatoes into the boiling water. And let's see. Let's see. Set timer for 10 minutes. Let's see if it's, let's see if it's happy now. She has not been a happy camper today. I've got enough water in there, so I think I'm good there. Uh, and now we're gonna make our sauce. Damn you. This just not, I need to restart this thing. No, no, not the New York Times. Okay. I assume this cooks really fast. 10 minutes, go. Alrighty, moving right along. Come this way. Okay. We are going to start in on our sauce. Our dill sauce. And now uh, that's where our dill that's been sitting here all lonesome comes into play. Uh, got you, got you, got you. Okay. We need a bowl. We got to clean out a bowl. Oh, we've moved on to someone else's Swedish folk songs. Wow, I can't read that. Sven Berti Taube? 
Vision Iveta, would you like to know? I would. I really, really would. Okay, we've got our bowl. And to our bowl, we are going to be adding, uh, to make our sauce, four tablespoons of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. This is olive oil mayonnaise, but yeah. I like it better. Uh, so we're looking for four, three, four, how many? Four, four. Four tablespoons of mayonnaise. One. A two. Three, let go, let go. Three, sort of. Four, sort of. Okay, four tablespoons of mayonnaise, and I need to wash out that spoon. Because to that, I need to add sour cream. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So two tablespoons of hell on camera, camera, camera. And I need to move on the uh, cucumber stuff too. So you and then two tablespoons of sour cream to the mayonnaise. Right hand, left hand. One sour cream, two sour cream. Let go, let go. Okay. And uh, I need to clean the sucker out again. No, no, I'll be okay right now. Because I need to add Dijon mustard. So we've got our Dijon mustard right here. Dijon, say Dijon mustard. And we're adding three quarters of a tablespoon. Three quarters, here we go. Of the Dijon mustard to the put this aside while we take out the leaves of dill uh, and we're gonna add those to the mix once we chop them up. So you, you knew that would come back into play. You know what? I'm leaving a couple of these aside uh, for um, garnish at the end before I chop them up. Meanwhile, ooh, 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 guess what, guess what, guess what? You'll never guess. Brooklyn, Maine, hello, thank you for the like and the restream. Ooh, 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 I can show something off. I forgot I had it. I got it, I got it, I got it over New Year's at that place I was just mentioning in Columbus with all the food gadgets. I was so happy. I've been wanting one for a long, long time, and now I got one. And I'm going to use it for the very first time. It's like that. It's set a mezzaluna. And this one folds up. So it doesn't take up so much space in the cabinet. Gotta get the hang of that. 
Well, that's handy. It sure is. Um, there's a uh, fine gentleman who uh, used to be on Meer Meerkat. I haven't seen him in a million years, but his name is Etienne. And I saw he had a, a stream. He's in Paris. And he was using one of the formal ones of these that have the big wooden handles. And I was like, what is that? I need that. Oh my god. I always have such trouble chopping up my herbs. And he was using this, and I was thinking, oh my god, I must have one. What is that? And he sent me pictures, and I said, oh, someday. And now it's like, I said, Christmas time, I'll get one. And now I did. Yeehaw. And look how fine that's gotten. That is so freaking cool. I love this thing. I am officially in love. Is bigamy allowed if it's with a kitchen implements? Hey Tony, how you doing? Thank you for the like and the restream. Utility knife for use. Uh, utility knife built use for knife skinning whale. Oh wow, that makes sense. It, lo it looks it looks like a big whale skinning thingy with the handles. Oh, Ahab. All right. Okay, into, here you go. I will see your comment in a second here. Uh, uh, what's it called? It's called the Meza Luna. Meza for half, Luna for moon, so it looks like a half moon. Mezzaluna. M-E-Z-Z-A-L-U-N-A. Mezzaluna. So once I wash my hands... But I'm glad I got the fold-up one. It was, it was a debate between the two because I wanted... At first I thought I wanted the one that was more traditional. But then they're like, oh, less space in the cabinets. I said, you know what, I guess that really does matter quite a, quite a bit, so... Dill into the sauce. Drunk. It's probably too much, but screw it. And salt and pepper. Salt. Doesn't say how much. But I've learned not to be shy. And pepper. And now we mix it up. This is our dill mayonnaise, dill sauce. From Ilkalut. My friend I worked with was Inuit. Oh, really? Uh, well, when you're up there, you're closer to an Inuit, Inuit population. So, I guess that stands to reason. I'm gonna have a lot of dill sauce here. Technically, it serves four to six. Uh, or two to four, or basically more than we need, but I think we'll be okay. Choo -choo -choo, that's really cool, those handles on yours. Yes, I like it. Okay, here goes. We're going to try it out. Mmm. Mmm, why? Hey, 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 bunny. Bunny is funny. How are you doing, bunny is funny? That is tasty. Mmm. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. That's gonna go in the fridge. I gotta take a picture of that. That's too good. That is some kind of good. Simple, fast. I never thought I'd say I like dill. But now I do. Okay. Uh, but, uh, and there goes my timer. So let's see how our the potatoes are doing. Yes, I heard you, honey. Be quiet. Okay, doing good. Yeah, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna put you far away from the fire so you don't get all hot on me. Um, that would be good on sweet potato fries. It would be good on anything. That is, yeah, sweet potato fries would be a good choice. Okay, let's find out if these are. Uh, how they are in the firm, in the firm department. Hmm. 
I know they cook quickly, but probably not that quickly. Or maybe they are. You know, I think they're close enough. A couple more minutes would do. Uh, one thing that I just read, um, just probably today or yesterday, was about how and when to salt and to not be afraid to salt the water and da da da, except for potatoes. It said to not uh, put your salt in the potatoes until close to the end, because um, otherwise they get all mushy or something. Uh, but when salting pasta, it said you want it like really semadana. I just saw the other one. I saw the Donna Summer one last night. I watch all old Saturday Night Lives. One's like, who is this? Who is this queen of disco? Donna Summer? And how does she appear on the phone book? Samadonna? Stretch it out now. Summer Donna? Samadonna? Summer. Summer. Summer Donna. Summer Donna. 20 minutes probably? I would thought so. They say they quick cook quickly. So I wasn't sure. Meanwhile, this over here is supposed to cool. But, you know, with the lid on. So apparently it's supposed to cool very, very slowly. But, you know, how how slowly is an interesting question. Uh, oh, we've got stuff to do over here, don't we? So in the next, uh, you know, five, ten minutes. Well, um, we're going to get back to our um, cucumber. Cucumber's been sitting in here. And now we need... This n hardly used jar that somebody gave me sometime in the 1980s and I have never had use for other than to store pennies. It has been washed many times since then and has been sitting empty and very clean. So the idea is we're taking off uh, my new toy. I found a new use for the, for the skillet. Hold on while I put this heavy thing away. Uh, 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 don't fall. Uh. Okay, taking off that. Oopsie doopsie. Don't stick. Don't stick. Okay. So now we've got our cucumbers and we're going to drain off the liquid. There's liquid that's gathered. I don't know if you can see uh, on there. So I'm going to. I'm going to use the colander to drain them. Here, come with me. want you to go into the drink. Water has definitely gotten off of those. So that squeezing did a nice job of draining a good deal of the water. Now, ha ha ha, it's supposed to be in the fridge for an hour. Mm, that's not going to happen. We ain't got an hour. However, maybe I'll just have it for a side dish for um, tomorrow or the next day, and that's okay. This was sort of like um, the one thing that would last all three days. Now, new use for the cast iron, smacking husband with it. It would be the double hand, yeah, he'd have a lot of time to run away in the time it took to lift it up. Because it's darn heavy. Uh, back to page one. Uh, we are putting in a quarter of the cucumbers into this jar, gauging what a quarter of them is. Freezer for 20 minutes. Hmm. You might have that kind of time. Interesting idea. Smart. Very smart. Okay. Again, it's not looking like the pictures. It, I don't know if they had like bigger cucumbers or more, I think they had more cucumbers. Maybe their cucumbers are huge. Um, I say that's about a quarter of the cucumbers. Hand wash. Okay, pictures, pictures, pictures. Yeah, okay. And then we're adding a quarter of the parsley. <coughs> And then, taking a picture. 
and then another where did you go a quarter of the cucumbers back to you see in their in the pictures they like filled up the whole jar so either they had a lot more cucumbers than they said they did or their cucumbers are freakishly large it could be either it could be both you never know okay and then where's the salmon i left the room it's in the uh cooling in the pot with the lid on it so sitting there to cool down it's supposed to be cold but it's going to be like not hot i'm glad to see my cousin isn't the only one with this christmas tree swell we're taking it down right now or we would be uh, the husband's been occupied taking the Christmas lights down. Usually, oh, thank you for the like, uh, bunny is funny. Um, the uh, other quarter of the uh, parsley coming right up here. The uh, We always keep it up until after Three Kings Day. Uh, um, because I'm Puerto Rican, the, I still have the, the memory of, of celebrating Three Kings Day. In case you didn't know, and you probably don't, unless you are Puerto Rican or have someone Puerto Rican in your life, the uh, the premise on Three Kings Day is, uh, you know, the day that the wise men arrived, yada, 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 um, is uh, the night before, uh, little children take a shoebox and go outside in the backyard and fill it with grass. Remember, we're in a tropical region. Um, and uh, then you put the box of shoe with uh, grass for the uh, to feed the camels. Um, under your bed, and in the morning the grass is gone and this place is toys. So uh, that's how Three Kings Day works in Puerto Rico. Um, for me, the memory is not entirely happy. Um, yet I still do, you know, think of it as a thing. Uh, so we are putting the last of the cucumber. So that's what Three Kings Day. Yes, Three Kings Day. Uh, Three Kings Day is December 6th, so the night of the 5th, the little children put the shoebox under their, under their beds, and then on the morning of the 6th, they wake up, and that is the big day. In Puerto Rico, um, Christmas Day is not a big day. Uh, Christmas Eve is the big night. You have a big old party where everyone gets really, really drunk. They uh, eat a lot of roast pork, they drink a lot, and they go door to door, but you would call caroling. No, because of, um... Los asaltos, the assaults. So they go assaulting, they, they caroling, but the idea is you go door to door singing, you know, these, you know, uh, songs uh, with instruments and making lots of noise. And some of the songs go along, si no me da de beber, lloro. It's if you don't give me something to drink, I'm going to cry. If you don't give me something to eat, I'm going to cry. You force your way into your neighbor's house. They make you, you make them feed you and give you drinks, and then you take them to the next house until the whole neighborhood's in a block party and drunk. And then Christmas morning, you have like one little present, and then it's like Three Kings Day, you get like the big old presents. So that's the way it works in Puerto Rico. Here in Ohio, uh, oh, where in Ohio are you? Uh, it's just starting to feel like Christmas weather was. Well, I was just in Ohio, but you probably heard me say that. Lavender Femchi, hey there, thank you for like, for like in the restream. Okay, now that we've added our fourth quarter of all that into it, uh, I learned something new. Yes. See, the problem is when you're Puerto Rican and you live in the States, the schools, no one gives a poo about Three Kings Day. School has started by the time Three Kings Day comes along. So you're going to be in school on Three Kings Day, and you're going to be feeling like you missed out, and you're not going to be happy about it if you were a spoiled little kid like I was. So uh, here's our sugar, water, vinegar mix uh, with the uh, stuff in there. So we're pouring that into our jar. Can you see? You can't see. Now you can see. It's weird that, you know, I'm, I'm cooking Swedish food and talking about Puerto Rican Three Kings Day traditions. Little town west of Columbus. Which town, little by you in Hilliard? Is that where you are? Did we have this conversation before? Hilliard with the, near the place with the Converse Avenue and Nike Street and Adidas is 
Lane and Head Street. I had a client that lived in that neighborhood. In fact, there was a restaurant that uh, was the only place in town then that you could get, you know, Cuban Puerto Rican food, and that was in Hilliard also. So we're closing up our jar. And you said 20 minutes in the freezer, eh? Well, I'm going to try it. But I better not forget, because that would be a bad thing. So we'll see. I need to know, Four Stevenson, what little town are you in? James. Uh, and did you see the video for um, uh, Gems, Gems, Gem, Gem McCallum? Thank you for the restream. Um, the video for that uh, Stressed Out by, uh, was it 21 Pilots? Is that what they're called, 21 Pilots? Uh, he has his earbuds in. He can't hear me. I could talk about him now and he wouldn't know. Um, but the video for the Stressed Out, uh, I swear it must have been filmed in Hilliard. There's a top, number of top 10 song right now. The group is from Columbus and the video is shot in wherever it is they live in some cul-de-sac. And I was just trying to figure out where. Uh, no, further than that, London, but I know about Hilliard and some of Columbus. Oh, okay. I know where London is, though. I had to uh, drive. I had to drive through every last thing that was in the Columbus vicinity because I lived there for six years. That's how I knew. Okay, now we have to do the exciting, exciting thing of waiting and washing, which is okay. I think he doesn't like the Swedish folk music because he has his earbuds in. I never see that. Uh, I tasted that. Oh, 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 dude. Potatoes. Almost forgot. Uh, gotta drain the potatoes. But here's where I need my colander back. You go in here. And you're gonna land in there. I think the potatoes should be done. London, Ohio. Now, is is it is it pronounced London, Ohio? Because I know, like, Ohio, yeah. every town has... Oh, he can hear me. <laughs> uh, every town has its own weird pronunciation. Like, uh, a town which would be called Versailles. In any other town, it's called Versailles. Versailles. And Newark is called Newark. Rio Grande. Yes, instead of Rio Grande, it's Rio Grande. Instead of Lima, it's Lima. So Ohio has the weird pronunciation. So is it London, perhaps? Is it Lundan? And Louisville, not Louisville. Yes, Louisville instead of Louisville. So he can hear me. Um, okay, so we're gonna start draining the taters. Because I'm pretty sure they're done. Pretty, pretty sure. Okay, let's find out. Yes, definitely. Most definitely. You know what? I can just take them out with a slotted spoon. I don't need you. Slotted spoon to the rescue. And these will hold their temperature well enough. I hate doing dishes. Um, well, if you don't have a dishwasher, it really sucks. As I mentioned before, when I was in college, I lived in this little slum of an apartment. I mean, the bedroom door was off the hinges and in the closet. Um, the paneling was coming off and it had a stove, which couldn't fit a whole dish. It, I could put one dish in this way. Um, and London, like London, England. Well, wow, that's a, a rarity for Ohio. Um, and, uh, but anyway, the dish went like this. So I had one dish, I had one plate, I had one cup, I had one fork, I had one knife, I had one pot, I had one pan. Uh, Columbus has quite a music scene. I never knew about it. Love to go check it out. Uh, yes, there are um, uh, three bands that ever came out of Columbus. Uh, four if you're being technical. Um, these new people, these 21 Pilots, which are probably the biggest hit in the history. Then Saving Jane, a band from about 10 years ago. 
and then Rascal Flats, which is like the biggest country thing. And then um, the song, the dance, the Madison. I don't know if you ever saw Hairspray, but this dance they do called the Madison, which was big for a point in the early 60s, was invented right in Columbus. Uh, hey there, uh, Miguel, Jose, Ch Miguel Jose Chavez. How are you doing? Uh, let us uh, take a picture of our taters here. And now uh, we gotta see how cold we've gotten our salmon. At least you had a pot to piss in. Ha ha ha! Ah. It's still steamy. Love Saving Jane. You know, I was in Columbus and I was sitting there going, what's the name of that band? What's the name of that band? And the husband and I each went to the restroom and then I didn't realize he'd already left and I was standing there and I said, Saving Jane! And the guy next to me said, what? I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Sorry, bad. Hey, Yolanda, how you doing? Hello there, happy Saturday. Uh, we are cooking our Swedish food. Night one of three. Next night is tomorrow, night two of three. Um, we're doing something interesting tomorrow and then something on Tuesday. So tonight we are doing our, pre uh, what's the, what's the, uh, pres, uh, pres gurka, which is pressed cucumber which is sitting in the freezer because we're kind of cheating. It should be in the refrigerator for an hour. Uh, our Kali Incoct Lax, which is cold poached salmon, and it's not really that cold. Oh, screenshots, okay. Mm, hold on, pose pretty. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't have anything to put in my hand right now, though. Mm. I've got potatoes, I can show you potatoes. These are potatoes, they're hot. Hot potatoes, ooh, hot. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. Okay, hope you got it. Uh, let's get this out of the way, and uh, I'm gonna get my plates ready. The, uh, you know what? I need to. I want to check. I want to check and see this one recipe about the uh, salmon doesn't say um, how long it takes to cool, which uh, could be a problem because I know it's not gonna get cool you know, covered up and stuff like that. But that's, that's what they got. Uh, we're going for, drain it for a bit. Uh, pick funny, oh good, ah. Love going over to ComFest over in Goodale Park. I know, I lived across the street from it. Every ComFest I would mm, hit the road. I'd go to Louisville for the weekend because a million people at a party is fine. A million people at a party 24 hours a day for three days on your front stoop, not so much fun. Especially when you're trying to sleep. So I was like, Confest, hey, should have moved further, moved further away. Uh, never seem, it seems never ending washing dishes, even with the dishwasher. Well, it does seem to go on forever. Thankfully, the husband does a nice job of helping. We kind of do it together after dinner too. Um, uh, remove this. Uh, no, hold on. Well, it's not gonna be that cold. That simple seems, yeah. So uh, it's just not gonna be that cold, but it's gonna drain. Oh, um, that yellow plate, I need uh, to snag one of those. Okay. So we're gonna let this quasi rinse for a little bit. A rinse of. Drain. The little of me smart. Uh, let's move over this way. So we're gonna address the salmon. Hello, salmon! So it's been cooling off in there for a while. It's buried underneath all that good stuff. Uh, is big party topless women, people drinking and smoking pot basically hippie fest? Yes, yes it is. And it's always on my front door. And I did not know. I bought, I bought the place, this is in Columbus, I bought the place and I said, oh, hello, lovely. We are like a block off the main drag and every month, I thought it was every month, but I thought it was once a year, but it turned out it was every month, big party on the main drag. I said, oh, we're far enough from that and I don't deal with the noise. And then, the, oh, there's this big party that happens like on the big park, which is like steps from my front door. And I said, oh, that's fine. And then like directly across my window, there was a garage and a loud blues band was playing with amps pointed right at my window and they played like all day for three days, shaking the walls. 
and then people would like be sitting on my front stoop smoking and all be like in regular cigarettes and be coming into my house and I'd be screaming bloody murder and the cat would be hiding and then people you know wouldn't want to go to the porta johns and then they would just like pee in the coke cans and leave them on in my front stoop yeah it did not make me happy um, so once a month I like cursed every hippie in the world and left town and I said I want to send these people a bill and I was mad that they didn't tell me before I moved so it says, a fine party if you live like four blocks further away. But when you live there, not so much. Some people I know like rented out their places to other people who liked the party um, while they left. And I was thinking, that's fine, but what happens when you come back and your house has been trashed? Things about that I think about. So we're, here's our salmon, now been poached. <coughs> you think that was bad? Yeah, it was bad. I, I started feeling like Cartman from South Park going, Die, hippie, die! Yeah. But I get to see Louisville every year. Yeah, it was bad. It was so bad. And the, the, fir the first year we, we just went out to the suburbs. We just got a hotel in the suburbs. Got some, you know, place where, you know, business people on the road, like, park at. Because I said, I can't, I have to be able to sleep. It just, woo, did not make me happy. I have a million pictures, though. I would show them to you if I could. Apparently the little photo showing thing here only goes back like six photos. So uh, I can show you a photo of the band from last night. That was the band. Say hello to Silver Sun Pickups. Woohoo! Rock on! Okay, so we're almost almost there, I think. Almost there? Yes. Okay. I'm not gonna start plating. I think. Or I can clean. I'm gonna clean a little bit and then no, let me clean. You okay. do whatever to set the table or what have you. Um, so there goes the picture. Put my music away. Okay. You listen to the band, I'm assuming? For last night, yeah. Okay, good. For, I was thinking Christmas music and I realized that doesn't make sense. I don't know. Dress that salmon in what? A suit and a tie. Ha ah. ha! James, you are the king of the dad jokes. Cute. Very cute. Um, so let me just, I'm cleaning this out because uh, I'm needing to cool that down because it's still a little on the warm side and I got a couple minutes anyway. Uh, eso es raro. Que? Que es raro? Where did you see Silver Sun pickups? I saw them at a place called the, cult, the Culture Room in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, eso es raro. Que? El salmón, otra cosa. Dígame, señor. Um, beep, 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 beep. Uh, yes, it was very cool. Uh, like I said, the husband is very into them. I enjoyed it. He thought I was going to be, he thought I was hating it, but I was enjoying it. But the idea of standing in a loud room where, you know, rock band is playing was uh, not something I have done in, in years. So. But it made me feel younger. Uh, Bunny, thank you for the follow. I love Silver Sun pickups. Well, that's cool. They were very good. Although the weird thing is that, and I think this has to do with any rock club, because uh, when I saw the B-52 was back in the 80s. I saw them in this in the this big what do you call like gymnasium type scene and it was this acoustics were so bad I was singing along every word to a song that I found out was a totally different song by the time the song was over. I was like, wait a minute, that was a totally different song. I couldn't even tell what song was playing. Uh, nice if you get the chance, check your Al I love Alabama Shakes. They are so good. They they're up for Bad album of the year. Very good. And the Almond Brothers. Uh yeah, the, the Allman Brothers are rather well, legendary. Um, I, I, I think they're fine. They're not my particular thing, but I do enjoy their music. Uh, but Alabama Shakes, they are really cool. Uh, and uh, JQ, uh, your name? JQFP, thank you for the follow. So, um, Allman Brothers, they're from Georgia? I think they're from Georgia? Or are they from upstate Florida? I'm a little conf confused. I know Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers from Gainesville. 
I'm getting a little punked up on my music trivia here. Oh, I'm still cleaning in order to let things cool off. So that's that's what I'm doing, if you wonder what I'm doing. I'm letting the salmon cool off, I'm letting the um, cucumbers get cooler in the fridge. Just for a second. Oh, but that Alabama Shakes album is really good too. I was going through all these different, like, you know, uh, recommended things, like Tame Impala which uh, everyone was talking about, and I really liked that. And The Internet, a group called The Internet, which is sort of like alternative R&B. I thought that was super cool. I went on a, on a new music tear the other day. So them and there was a third, oh, Courtney, Courtney Yates. Um, interesting. Everyone puts that on the, one of the best albums of the year things. Uh, and then I went on a classic Bill Withers tear this afternoon, so. And now we're listening to Swedish jazz. Not sure, Greg Allman married Cher for a while. Yes, he had an album with Cher called All Man and Woman. I don't think you can find that anymore. Like Cher's, you know, Allman rock period is, is, not, is not available. Good evening. Good evening, Derek. We are almost ready to serve. We're using uh, Scottish uh, Scottish salmon. See, there's a Scottish salmon right there. All poached. She is all poached. She looks very yellow. Um, that's because of the lighting. How are you doing? Um, we are ready to plate. Uh, let's see how cool we got. How cool we got in the fridge. Is the table set? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, buddy, buddy. Okay, so we have our potatoes. Are you watching SNL tonight? Is it new tonight? I don't think it's new tonight. Uh, but I am watching SNL. I'm watching SNL every night. When there's not a new episode, I watch another old episode in order. So I see them all, all the time. I am obsessive that way. I start from the beginning, work my way through, and then I work my way through again. So I've gone... But I don't, I don't think I'll go through a, a third time. Some memories will, it, it dredges up some memories that aren't really great. So, which is weird for me. That's my internal monologue. Lovely, thank you, Derek. So we have our new potatoes here. And now we're going to put on the poached salmon here. And taking off the onion. And uh, I am Chinese. You are Chinese. Hello. Where in China are you? Um, Excuse me. Thank you for the follow. You're Jimmy Fallon fans. Yes, he's very fun. I'm happy to be in the watching the period where he was just getting started there. It's interesting seeing the evolution. How someone goes from the guy in the background to the guy in the foreground. So we have our dill sauce. Mm, hard to see. Very tasty. Insanely tasty. And our cucumbers, which should have been in the, were in the fridge. Cucumbers. So we're plating a little bit of these. Where in China are you? If 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 you can if you can detect that, I'm I'm kind of curious. Uh, I made a dish from Macau um, during the off week, which is very, very tasty. So we're putting some of the cucumbers alongside. You're going to see these um, tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So, and I know that they get better with time. Uh, hmm. And not time with a TH. Because that's in what we're cooking tomorrow. As soon as I finish eating, I need to schedule tomorrow's stream. I can't wait to see the reunion of Guns N' Roses on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, on Jimmy Kimmel, really? Ah, Taiwan, ah. Well, good to see you. Uh, I think I might be cooking Taiwan um, after I finish Zimbabwe, because I'm doing all the non-UN member countries. And Taiwan falls into that category. So um, look for that in the summer. Or, or fall, if you're sticking around that long. 
uh, so we have for this now we're going to drizzle the sauce on top a small city ah oh oh so it's not Taiwan uh, I'm trying I'm gonna try to get the pronunciation Taiwan it sounds like Taiwan oh, uh, or maybe a small city on the island of Formosa um, in any case thank you so much for watching thank you very much so we're putting on the dill sauce here I'm trying to be generous because a it's so good and B uh, I made more than I needed to and I may use it for something else who knows I'm cooking right now you are that's cool so we're dressing with a little sprig of the dill on top ta-da and I'm gonna clean the plate and then we'll be ready to eat got some stray parsley here that looks really pretty that one's not quite so pretty okay so camera time uh, doesn't look like enough food to be honest but we'll make it work uh, camera okay and action in three two one Okie dokie. Taipei, ah, yes. Taipei, Taiwan, ta yes. Formosa, very nice. Okay. So here we have, follow the hand, we have our, hope we, hope we get the lighting right. I need, I need something to block the light. Here. Cast a shadow. Huh? Can you see? We have our salmon. Uh, in the, with the dill sauce, poached salmon and dill sauce. Maybe if I go the other way, uh -uh, this way. Uh, poached salmon with the dill sauce and our new potatoes uh, with the pressed cucumber. And then over here, same deal, the salmon. Uh, sorry, it looks so bright against with the camera here. Uh, the new potatoes and the pressed cucumber. Uh, I would have a little butter with those potatoes, otherwise it looks lovely. Uh, yes, I think it needs a little less salt too. Um, but I did add salt at the end. But I don't want to taste one because there's only so many. So thank you very much, Tony. Thank you all. Uh, check with us tomorrow. As soon as I finish eating, I'll schedule tomorrow's stream. Tomorrow we're making a uh, South Swedish lamb stew with dill. It's going to be a very interesting lamb stew. Uh, thank you, uh, Diana. Uh, thank you, uh, Charmé, or Sparkle Pancakes. Um, thank you very much. And then on Tuesday, we're making, you guessed it, Swedish meatballs uh, with lingonberry jelly and egg noodles. So that should be good too. Thank you all. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank everyone. Thank you all for watching. Uh, catch you tomorrow. So uh, follow here on Meerkat, follow at cliffyland.com on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook at Cliffyland, the Global Cooking Challenge. Just look for Cliffyland on Pinterest, search for Cliffyland. On um, Meerkat, you're there already. Uh, YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And uh, 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 every place. So.